Ever since their early days, SpaceX and Blue Origin have been locked in an intense private space race. Still, in recent years, the gap between them has only grown wider. Elon Musk's company keeps charging ahead with massive projects, while Jeff Bezos' venture struggles with delay after delay, slipping further behind. Things have gotten so bad that even a much smaller player has now managed to embarrass them. And that is Rocket Lab. So, what exactly did this little space firm just pull off that's making the giants take notice? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech, Blue Origin and Rocket Lab. When you hear these two names, most people would assume Blue Origin must be the bigger, older, and more successful company. And on paper, that's true. Founded back in 2000, two years before SpaceX, by billionaire Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin now has around 10,000 employees. The company has built up a massive workforce to support huge projects like New Glenn, New Shepard, and Blue Moon, even winning multi-billion dollar contracts from NASA. Rocket Lab, meanwhile, is a much smaller outfit, with only about 1,500 employees, limited revenue, no billionaire backing, and constant financial pressure. But here's the paradox. It's actually Blue Origin that's falling behind. The company has been plagued by repeated delays with its New Glenn rocket and persistent technical challenges. Their NG2 mission was originally planned for August 24th, but the date has already slipped three times, with no sign of a launch anytime soon. Even more telling, it took them 13 years just to get New Glenn off the ground for the very first time earlier this year, far from the company's original promise to launch back in 2021. Rocket Lab, on the other hand, may not be seen as a direct rival to the Giants, but the company has made some truly impressive strides. In just seven years, it has launched its small electron rocket more than 60 times, already a more consistent track record than Blue Origin's New Glenn. And now, Rocket Lab is preparing to move up a weight class with its upcoming medium-lift rocket, Neutron, which is expected to fly for the first time later this year, after only four to five years of development. That debut flight will mark Rocket Lab's entry into the highly competitive market of major commercial launch providers, where the battle is fiercer than ever. And in preparation for that milestone, Rocket Lab has recently made a bold move that's turning heads across the industry. Just over a week ago, Rocket Lab proudly broke ground on the construction of its brand new launch complex, LC3, where the Neutron rocket will one day lift off. And the timeline is ambitious. Completion could come as early as the end of this year. Located at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at Virginia's Wallops Island, LC3 will support Neutron's testing, launches, and recoveries, making it the largest vehicle ever to fly from that site. Of course, largest is relative here. If Neutron were to launch from Kennedy Space Center or Boca Chica in Texas, it would look almost tiny since it's still noticeably smaller than SpaceX's Falcon 9. As we prepare for our next generation rocket, having a world-class launch and landing site is exactly what we need, said Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck at the ceremony, which was attended by Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin and other state officials. Neutron's high launch cadence will expand domestic capability and enable the United States to rapidly and reliably reach the ISS, Earth orbit, the Moon, and beyond. Rocket Lab sees Neutron as a strong contender to ease the growing bottleneck in launch demand from both commercial and military customers. Right now, that demand is largely being met by just one player in the medium lift market, Elon Musk's SpaceX. The ultimate goal for Neutron is to support some of the most critical and complex national security missions for the Department of Defense. At the moment, only SpaceX and United Launch Alliance are certified for these missions, though Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is expected to join once New Glenn clears all certification hurdles. But let's be real, that day still looks far off. Blue Origin recently scrubbed its second New Glenn launch due to a booster avionics issue adding to an already long list of setbacks. Until New Glenn is finally ready, Rocket Lab has a real shot at outpacing Blue Origin in satellite launches, possibly dominating their share of the market for the next two or three years. In fact, just last March, the U.S. Space Force added Rocket Lab to its $5.6 billion National Security Space Launch Program, giving Neutron preferential treatment for a range of lower-tier military missions. For Rocket Lab, this was one of the biggest wins in its history, proof that the small company is finally being taken seriously in the big leagues. But that recognition also raised the stakes. 
Before breaking ground on the new launch complex, Rocket Lab had to think carefully about whether Neutron could really live up to its potential. After all, leasing and building a launch site is no small investment. If their new rocket doesn't perform as designed, the whole effort would be seen as a major failure. And let's not forget, Neutron hasn't even flown a single test mission yet. Of course, maiden flights always carry risks, from accidents to disappointing results. That's why, just a few months ago, Rocket Lab carried out extensive testing to ensure safety. On X, they posted, pointy end up. Testing is underway and close to completing qualification. This Neutron assembly represents the top of stage one and includes the Hungry Hippo reusable fairing, canards, and the extended interstage with some of the most complex mechanical systems that exist on the vehicle. The accompanying video is just a 3D simulation, but it clearly illustrates how this rocket is supposed to work, true to its nickname, the Hungry Hippo. Unlike traditional rockets that jettison their payload fairings into space, Neutron's fairing is built from carbon fiber composite and permanently integrated with the first stage booster. Instead of being discarded, the nose cone splits open like a giant mouth to release satellites or spacecraft into orbit and then closes back up for the booster's return to Earth. Rocket Lab calls this the Hungry Hippo design because, well, it really does look like a hippo opening its mouth wide. Pretty clever, right? On top of that, Neutron has also gone through simulated flight operations under cryogenic conditions, along with integrated software, avionics, and guidance system testing to recreate real mission scenarios. Even more impressively, the stage has passed pressure and load tests at 125% of its maximum operating pressure while under mechanical stress, proving it's ready for the journey to orbit. Rocket Lab has also highlighted one of Neutron's most unique design choices, the second stage, something fans are especially excited about. Unlike traditional rockets, where the upper stage sits on top of the booster and is supported from below, Neutron's second stage is actually suspended from above, hanging inside the first stage's fuel tank. This clever setup takes advantage of lightweight carbon composite structures, cutting overall mass and boosting efficiency. During flight, once the first stage's fairing opens up in space, the second stage is released, ignites its Archimedes engine, and carries the payload to orbit, a streamlined approach to staging. As Peter Beck might put it, it's basically a one-time deal, like a cosmic getaway car. Of course, with this kind of setup, Neutron's second stage is unlikely to be fully reusable. At best, Rocket Lab might be able to recover certain parts of the fairing. Still, opting for an expendable upper stage allows the company to sidestep the ongoing costs and complexity that come with refurbishing reusable upper stages. So that's how Neutron will carry out its mission. But here's a quick question. How is this rocket actually going to land? Well, on July 11th, the company proudly announced a partnership with Bollinger Shipyards to complete the build-out of a massive 400-foot landing platform. Oh, wow. Rocket Lab is going big. Really big. The drone ship will be almost as long as a Starship rocket. This is where Neutron will touch down after returning from orbit, at sea, on its very own customized drone ship. In other words, Rocket Lab is borrowing a page straight out of SpaceX's playbook with Falcon 9-style ocean landings. That's why the Neutron's original design already included fixed landing legs. And this is actually a pretty advanced engineering choice. Fixed legs don't need to fold out or retract, which eliminates a major point of failure. If your landing gear doesn't deploy or lock properly, your rocket isn't landing. End of story. But the real beauty of fixed legs comes from reusability, which is the whole point. Since they never have to be stowed before launch, they need far less inspection or refurbishment between flights. Fewer moving parts means faster turnaround, lower costs, and more launches. Now, there is one interesting detail here. Even though Rocket Lab calls them fixed, the animations show the legs moving slightly, sliding down vertically to absorb the impact. It's minimal motion, more like a built-in shock absorber than a traditional deployable leg. So while they're not 100% static, they're still far simpler and sturdier than folding legs. In other words, the best leg is no leg, as Elon Musk often said. The excitement doesn't stop there, because Neutron will be powered by a brand new engine called Archimedes. This one's built entirely in-house by Rocket Lab. At first, the plan sounded pretty modest. Seven engines, a gas generator cycle, about one meganewton of thrust each, roughly 102 tons of force. Solid numbers, but nothing too fancy. But along the way, things changed, big time. 
the latest specs show much higher efficiency, and instead of seven engines, Neutron's first stage will now fly with nine Archimedes engines. Why the change? Well, the gas generator design was running into trouble, the turbines were getting way too hot, and the trade-offs weren't worth it. So Rocket Lab took the harder route and switched to a closed cycle design, the kind you'd normally see on bigger, more advanced rockets. The advantage for Rocket Lab is that Neutron's lightweight carbon composite body means Archimedes doesn't have to be pushed to the extreme, like Falcon 9's engines. They can keep the design a little simpler, which speeds up testing and development. And speaking of testing, back in January, Rocket Lab lit up an Archimedes prototype on the stand for the very first time. Just a short ignition, but a big step forward. Full duration hot fire tests are coming soon, and those will really show whether the engine can live up to the hype. Another major development, beyond Archimedes, has to do with the materials used in Neutron. It's set to become the first large launch vehicle in the world, built entirely out of carbon composites. Rocket Lab already proved the concept with its smaller electron rocket, which has been reliably putting commercial and government satellites into orbit since 2018. Neutron, however, takes things a step further with a brand new carbon composite that's lightweight, incredibly strong, and able to handle the brutal forces and temperatures of launch and re-entry again and again. That durability is what makes the first stage truly reusable. To speed up production, Rocket Lab is using an automated fiber placement system that can churn out meters of carbon rocket shell in just minutes. All of this highlights Rocket Lab's bold ambition to make Neutron a reliable workhorse in the medium lift market, especially now that it's been selected for the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. With its debut flight expected by late 2025 from Wallops Island, Virginia, Neutron's lightweight structure and powerful performance could give it a real edge in one of the most competitive corners of the launch industry. Overall, Rocket Lab is clearly on the rise, and they might even threaten SpaceX's dominance in the satellite launch market in the future. Meanwhile, Blue Origin is still mostly known for its space tourism flights on the oddly shaped New Shepard. That's why this bold move, securing Launch Complex 3, could actually become a turning point, maybe even the first real step toward outpacing Blue Origin. So, what do you think? In the long run, who's going to come out on top, Blue Origin or Rocket Lab?